is there any audio any audio do you have audio now oh good now I was trying to use a different I was trying to use an external microphone trying to use like a good quality mic but using this uh, I was trying to use this thing here it's a um, Rode video micro and I'm here broadcasting to Facebook however now you're just listening to the audio of my computer microphone which might suck but you're listening to me so who is getting here now again my name is Gustavo Silveira and maybe you follow my channel for a while maybe you are new here so that's the nerd musician channel which is a channel which for musicians that are nerds of course I like being nerds to to broad and back then being nerd was kind of a bad thing but like today being nerd is kind of like you have a kind of a hype like I'm a nerd you know geek it's cool but anyways in this channel I, che I teach people how they can use electronics and programming in order to make musical instruments uh, more specific MIDI controllers not only MIDI controllers because what is great about electronics and programming is that when you learn one thing when you learn one programming language you can learn all the other ones way easily and the programming language I'll be talking today which is the Arduino programming language which is a C based language it's pretty similar to C++ which is all the basic which is the basis for all programming languages uh, like Python or Java and so if you learn this uh, it's really easy and one just one step to uh, learn other programming languages and learn other things but we are not going to talk about programming languages really today this is like more advanced uh, topics and but it's the the, the that's the basis that's or the basis of what's happening in the things that we are going to talk today which is DIY MIDI controllers good news is that if you don't want to learn anything about programming language and learning how to write code uh, I'm going to talk about my workshop where I teach you how you can do your own MIDI controller without actually writing one line of code because I wrote everything for you and I'm going to give away my code and you're going to just have to adapt just change uh, one number like change six to five or change two to now to to eight and boom then you have your MIDI controller without actually having to learn a programming language and however if you want to learn I also have the other course which I actually teach everything about the nerdy gurdy I don't know how to say this expression how do you say ner nerdy gurdy please someone type in the comments how how do I say this expression N whatever if you didn't know I'm from Brazil and I speak my main, my mother tongue is Portuguese so uh, is there anybody from Brazil there algum brasileiro I saw that there's Kleber because he said something in in Portuguese I gotta see so before we start just uh, please people uh, tell me where you were from like where you're where you're listening to this video from right now so I can know uh, who you are to be honest with you I'm more interested in knowing who you are than telling you who I am but I'm gonna tell you who I am pretty soon so where are you guys from I don't know how much delay there is in this video but <clears throat> anyways while you guys uh, write where you're from and something that uh, uh, got Aaron from Florida and here uh, there's some people here on Facebook and 
Gabriel and Arma, Arma from Lithuania. He has been in my hometown. Pretty nice dude. Does some pretty crazy music. Pretty good. So if you are on Facebook, uh, please find in my page the link for YouTube. I mean, maybe you can just watch on Facebook. I will be prioritizing YouTube, looking at YouTube camera more than Facebook. But anyways, I'll be doing here both. So we have Michigan, Georgia, Jay Warren. Okay, I know you. You're on my Facebook, right? Um, Luis, Mexico, Buenos Aires. Cool. So, did Jay Jackson? Jackson Kleber, he's from Campinas, São Paulo, Brazil, North Carolina. Cool. Chris has a home studio. Uh, so nice to say that you have a home studio because one thing that making MIDI controllers can be really, really useful too is uh, I think I think a device. So let's uh, let's start talking, right? Content. Uh, first, like why I think you should be making your MIDI controllers. Uh, I think that there are three main reasons and depends on where you are and maybe you were in the three of them. One is if you are uh, a musician, electronic musician or a DJ and you want to save money, <laughs> right? So I, I, am, I come from Brazil which uh, prices of equipment it's really really expensive music equipment in Brazil is expensive so uh, Kleber can say can agree with me that their things are expensive but even here in the United States I'm living here I oh by the way right now I am in Indiana uh, in Muncie Indiana I live here because um, I work at Ball State University actually Yesterday was my last day at work and I'm not working here anymore from next week and I'm going to do I'm going to be doing something else and I want to talk about that because it's exciting. Anyways, if you are a musician that uses the computer and you want to save money, there's an equipment that you want to buy and you don't have enough money. Uh, right? Using an Arduino or uh, if you don't know what an Arduino is yet I'll, I'll tell you uh, later but making your own MIDI controller you can save a lot a lot a lot of money um, you can pay like maybe 20% of the price of a MIDI controller that you would buy in a store maybe even less uh, you know you can make and uh, so let, let, stick with me like this, this is one reason you can save money right but think that like okay I want that MIDI controller I want an S1 I want whatever uh, MIDI mixer if you do if you make it yourself you can save a lot of money uh, Chris said one of the biggest advantages of making your own MIDI controller is being able to create your own surface control you're not constrained to someone else's idea of your own workflow exactly so that's my second reason is okay first you just want to save money but second besides saving money you can now make a MIDI controller the way you want slash the way you need so I made a MIDI controller that just had three buttons just for play stop and record just for a transport control that was like for a for a for a client and he goes like I need a MIDI controller that I just want to control Pro Tools record stop and play how do you buy a MIDI controller like that are you going to use a MIDI controller that's this size has like 16 channels just to pause play and record no you can build one that just has three three and I think you're going you probably will spend in in a controller like that maybe like 10 bucks 15 bucks so uh, it can get really cheap and uh, in a while I'm going to get into the controllers I made for myself uh, 
which were the reasons of me starting to, one of the reasons of me starting to do my MIDI controllers. And the third reason, so first reason is you can save a lot of money because it, it's super cheap. An Arduino is super cheap and the components are super cheap. Second reason is that you can just make the way you want, right? You're not anymore constrained, uh, like Chris said, you're not more constrained to just what is available in the market. And the third, which for me it's, uh, oh, I guess it's like more reasons, I'm going to get more reasons. <laughs> Third reason is, um, I think it's kind of aligned with the third, which is self-expression. Um, because we make electronic music, right? But uh, I, I guess uh, some, of, some of us make electronic music, but some of us also make, let's say, acoustic music. I play the guitar. I've played the guitar my whole life. And I play other instruments. I play the keyboard, I play a little bit of the violin, but my main instrument is the guitar. However, when I go to Ableton Live to record my idea, which instrument I have to play? The keyboard or a launch pad with buttons. How can I express myself as a guitar player playing a keyboard? How can I express myself as a guitar player playing a launch pad? So once you're able to build your own instrument, you can make something that will allow yourself to express yourself way more or the way you ever want it. And I'm going to talk about an instrument that I've, that I've made, which is the XT synth, which is here, but it's off right now. Um, an instrument that I made that I did exactly thinking about that. I'm a guitar player. I want to play, I want to express myself as a string player, but at the same time, I want to play a synthesizer. Do you know how many instruments there are like that? I know one that's similar to that, which is the Artiphone instrument one. There's, there's another one that's kind of like the gem stick in the market, just two. And because they're just two, they, they are like pretty limited on, on what they do. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's it, for me it was crazy. There's no instrument for guitar players like that the way I want. So I'm going to build my own. So that's the, 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 the other reason, right? So you can save money. You can build the controller the way you want and you can express yourself if you are an artist, if that's your thing, right? Because now you can build not only, you can make not only the music, but you can make the tool that you use to make your music. So when you put your personality in your instruments too, not only in the music, you can, uh, you're going to be increasing the amount of you you're putting in your final product, in your final music or final art, art installation, whatever you do. And that was something that I never thought about before, you know, because you just take for granted that electronic music you make playing the keyboard. So, oh, okay, I have to play the keyboard now. I have to learn the keyboard. How good it would be if I had like the, the instrument that I had. Okay, there are some MIDI guitars, but that was not exactly what I was looking for. There are some difference, but anyways. And the uh, fourth reason, if you if you are uh, if you're a music producer, if you work in the studio, and you you use MIDI controllers for mixing, um, imagine that you have your favorite plugins. You love uh, the SSL channel strip. You love um, massive. Uh, you love massive native massive or absinthe, uh, any VST synthesizer any uh, effect, any processor, and but you have a MIDI controller that's generic. So every time you open a new project, you have to remap, and the MIDI controller you have don't really reflect the plugin that you're seeing in the screen. I think that happened to all of us. 
So if you know how to build your MIDI controller, you can just build a MIDI controller that reflects exactly the plugins that you use. You can make several MIDI controllers, one, each, one for each plugin in the exact same layout, or you can just make like one big MIDI controller in the, excuse me, in the layout of all of your plugins, all of your favorite plugins. What this is going to give to you? You're going to save a lot of time because it's going to be all in your fingertips. Your workflow will be way faster so you can boost your workflow. So for me, those are the main reasons. You save money, you build a MIDI controller uh, the way you need, and uh, it's, you can increase your self-expression, you can express yourself way more, and you can boost your workflow, and they're kind of all tied together, right? So I think that's enough reasons for any person that's m using the computer to make music to start building their own MIDI controllers. And although I'm just talking about music, MIDI controllers can be used for visual artists, you know, if you work with video. If you are a VJ, if you do like a live video, you can use MIDI controllers with uh, Resolume Arena, you can use with Modulate. Um, if you do photo editing, if you're a photo editor, you can use a MIDI controller with Lightroom. Uh, if you do light in a live, uh, if you're a lightning artist, lightning artist, that's how you say it, light artist, I don't know, if you do live lights for concerts, you can also make your own MIDI controller so you can uh, control your favorite uh, software if you're using the computer. So uh, it goes, it's really broad what you can do with a MIDI controller and what you can do if you make your own MIDI controller. So I'm just going to talk briefly, uh, I guess we all, if you're here, you probably know what the MIDI controller is and I get into way more detail in the, in the workshop. Uh, but a MIDI controller, first MIDI, MIDI is just a protocol. MIDI is just information that's used for, um, for you to communicate one device with another. So back then before MIDI, in the, like, uh, in the good old days of the synthesizers, when there's no MIDI, there was no standard way for uh, synthesizers to co communicate between them. So if you had a Bukla, or if you, have a, if you had a Moog synthesizer, for you to play with the keyboard of one with the sounds of the other one would be really, really hard. So in 1983, uh, MIDI was created, uh, not going to get into details how and by whom, but they created a protocol, a language, that could be used by different instruments from different brands using a specific cable, which is the MIDI DIN 5 pins, which we call MIDI cable. But then MIDI became so popular that MIDI became the standard for communication not only between musical instruments, but also those other softwares um, like v VJ softwares and like uh, like video editing and whatever. And a MIDI controller is nothing more than an interface that uses the MIDI protocol. Okay? So MIDI has no sound. Some people think that MIDI has sound, but actually MIDI is just information. MIDI will just tell you which note, uh, when, how loud the note is, the channel. Uh, then you have other things like uh, after touch, and you have different types of MIDI message, for example, note on when you play a note or note off when you release a note, or MIDI control change, which allows you to control parameters like volumes and effects. Uh, pitch band, the list is uh, really big. So MIDI can control a bunch of things, has several types of message, and you can use interfaces like a MIDI controller to control software and even hardware using this protocol. Is that cool? Do you have questions about MIDI, MIDI controllers? Just let me check here the, the question, like the comments. Uh, why so fast? I wish I knew that four years ago, man. MIDI controllers here in Brazil are way, way expensive. Luckily, I got some help to buy 
or own my luckily I got some help to buy my own launch pads so I guess he's Brazilian and he's complaining that they're super expensive and he wish he knew before yeah but what a better time than now right in four years you will not regret that anymore um, the act of creating the tool is also art I totally agree with that and I think that writing code and designing hardware is art and one that's one of the reasons that I fell in love with it it's because I think it's a really creative process and it's addictive that's the truth it's great because it's always a challenge you know uh, there's always how can I show this and you can find and when you write code there's always many ways of doing the same thing so there's no clear answer so you have to figure out so if you are a person that likes uh, creative challenge not challenge that's like so hard no it's a challenge that like makes your makes you think you know uh, writing code and learning a programming language is great and when you the, the feeling that you have when you can create your first program or your first instrument you feel like a wizard it's like I am a Jedi right now you know I built something from scratch like I'm it's just like I'm amazing <laughs> even if it's just the most simple thing just a MIDI controller that has one button or one potentiometer when you do it is it's really nice the feeling is great um, so yeah guys so let's let, let's keep going and let me see so let me just tell you how I started and um, I am a musician I don't have any background in engineering any background computer science whatever in 2015 I graduated in music composition in Brazil but my first um, the first time that I got in touch with anything uh, programming wise <clears throat> was using the software max MSP I don't know if you guys uh, if you guys heard of. I'm going to write here Max. Actually, today's just Max. There's no MSP anymore. But if you just Google Max, you're gonna find a lot of people called Max. I guess it's made from the company the company Cyclone 74. It's a really nice programming environment for multimedia art. It's all visual based. It's it's kind of like like a modular synthesizer where you can like drag patches it's a uh, it's kind of easy to learn but there's a limit well like just max msp is a whole video on its own i love max but i haven't been using that much but with max i was able to build my own kind of uh, great sounds and I could have some interactivity, some things in real to build the tool that I was using in a creative way and use this tool to make music for me or to make something for me. Um, but then I, okay, that was about it. And I graduated in 2015. And I had a project which is uh, called Bitcoma. Oh, I'm going to write here musical project where I was making all it was just electronic music it was my first electronic music project and I started making electronic music because I didn't want to play with anybody anymore because it was so hard to find a band right if you have a band maybe you understand me I love playing with people I totally love but I wanted to do something that was I was the sole responsible and um, but then I recorded the album and I, ha I had to have a, I wanted to play somehow. And I wanted to have MIDI controllers to play it. But as I told you, not that I told you, like one of the reasons that I started making my MIDI controllers was that I didn't have money to buy the MIDI controllers I wanted. So one thing that I want to show you right now is um, one of the controllers that I wanted for this project was a MIDI fighter. 
So um, let's just take a look on how much is a MIDI fighter. So let's just let's Google MIDI fighter here. So MIDI fighter around 219. So in Brazil, that was like ridiculous expensive. Like it was just impossible. Um, so I was, oh, damn, I don't have money to buy my MIDI controllers. What can I do? So it was like, I kind of have some experience with, uh, with Max MSP. Maybe I can try to build my own MIDI controller. So that when that was when the journey began. Um, I really spent, I guess, about one year um, trying to learn how to build a MIDI controller. My first idea was actually, um, let me share this with you. My first idea was using this thing here, which um, let me find here. This. I don't know if you heard about the, the, the Livid Brain. The Livid Brain is a board for you to make MIDI controllers. And it's really cool. However, a kit costs 189 Right? Without the components. So it's almost the price of a MIDI fighter. You can have, you can buy, uh, like a cheaper version, but it's still like just for a board is $50. So this is a board that was the first that I thought about $50. Now, let me show you on AliExpress how much an Arduino costs. The Arduino that I use in my project. So AliExpress is my is the, the holy grail of the DIY. Um, Two dollars and eighty-five cents. Two dollars and seventy-five cents. So would you rather pay fifty dollars or two dollars? Hmm. Hmm. I think the answer is pretty easy. And uh, the lived is easier to use, uh, but the Arduino is way cheaper and you can do way more. So using what I'm going to give you, which is in the, in the DIY MIDI controller, you can do that as easy with a Livid, but you can pay as low as 20 bucks for an Arduino. Uh, of course, that there's different types of Arduinos and uh, um, they range in price. And I'm going to talk about exactly now what this Arduino is. Because after I learned there's this Arduino, uh, I learned that I could save a lot of money making my MIDI controllers. So the Arduino is a board that uh, comes in different uh, models. So for example, I have two different types here. This is the Arduino Uno and this is the Arduino Pro Micro. An Arduino is the go-to board for DIYers, for makers, because it's cheap and it is made for people that doesn't have a good, like a background in engineering. When they made that, they made that thinking about their students engineering students that didn't have a background because before an Arduino uh, was just so hard. All the components were separate. You have to write your own firmware, your own software. And then they just made the board with everything together with a more familiar code. Uh, it's still based in C, which is a related complicated language, but in a way more familiar way for humans <laughs> to understand. And humans, like dumb humans like us, that don't have a prior knowledge in that. So the Arduino is easy to learn. There's tons of examples, tons of tutorials, tons of forums, tons of communities that help you to learn this thing. And you can do, 
it's the amount of things you can do. You can like, if you go to Maker Faire, you're gonna see tons of robots using Arduino. People will, when they make robots, they will use an Arduino probably. Of course, you can use other things, you know? Home automation. You can make home automation with an Arduino. Uh, if you see an art installation, LED art, you see some sort of Arduino. And um, then I learned that, oh my God, I can also make MIDI controllers with Arduino. This thing is so powerful. You can make, even make synthesizers with this, which is not this topic, but you can also make synthesizers. So lots of art applications for music. Uh, pe some people do uh, video synthesizers. You can synthesize video, you can make games. So imagine the power of this board for $2, right? So uh, I started making my own MIDI controllers. It took me a long time because there was no place with all the information in one place. So that was when I decided to do, to create my blog. And I thought if I am in this situation, wanting to learn how to make MIDI controllers inexpensively the way I wanted, I guess that there's more people in the same situation. So um, that's when I created the Nerd Musician blog, which is musicunergy.com. First was everything in Portuguese. I was in Brazil yet. Um, so, and by the time I also kind of created a company because people started to ask me to make MIDI controllers for them. So I created the beat controllers, which I don't use anymore. And I think it was one the day that like a big DJ in Brazil, uh, Philippe Sini, he has a big electronic music school. He ordered a MIDI controller from me and he showed it to his students. Then I started to get like lots of requests. And although it's nice to build MIDI controllers, it's great to build. Building MIDI controllers for other people all my time, all the time, it's not really something I enjoy that much. Like soldering and uh, I like creating. I don't really like repeating the process all the time. So I thought it was time to start writing tutorials on how people can do that. So I created some tutorials and I think I created my first version of the DIY MIDI controller in Portuguese and then my complete course, the Making Music with Arduino, back into like late 2015 or 2016. And uh, it was even something really bad happened back then in Brazil. I was touring with that project, Bitcoma and they stole, someone broke the house we were, not while we were there, and they stole everything, including my hard drive with half of my course. I had to redo everything. So by that, that, by that time, I lost my equipment, I lost my computer, my other interface, my MIDI controllers, and kind of the same time I had, I got like a, I wouldn't say a proposal. Someone invited me to do a master's in music, in music technology at Georgia Southern University. So shout out to Aaron Anderson. He was there. I don't know if he's still yet there. Um, so I came to the United States and to improve and learn more and more about how to make MIDI controllers. Then uh, I started doing some more, some better controllers. So let me just show you some of the things some of the things I've done let me share my screen with you so I've done I think just just let me show you I don't know where's the other media console I've, I've made anyways one of the things that I did that got popular was the Flipper DJ, so it's a controller with 16 arcade buttons and one, two, three, seven rotary potentiometers and seven rotary potentiometers and three slide potentiometers. It has this beautiful acrylic case, like enclosure. So uh, my, I'll be honest with you, my first MIDI controllers looked crap. 
So when you start, chances that your MIDI controller will look ugly as hell is big. Mine looked ugly as hell, but then I got the, the, the right way of designing and assembling and finding the right components and things start to look better. Uh, then, uh, since my audience was, a lot of them was DJs and like, uh, just let me know, there, is there any DJs in the, in the chat? Who's, or can, can you just tell me what's your, uh, what's your field if you're a DJ or electronic musician, studio engineer? What do you do? Please let me know in the comments. So since uh, a lot of my audience were DJs, they were asking me, oh, do you have any project for DJs? I was like, I don't, I'm not a DJ, so I don't know exactly what to do. But I thought it was, that would be really nice to uh, study a little bit and make a MIDI controller that would be uh, open source, which means all the code, everything is available for you to download for free and would be really inexpensive. Uh, so I designed the Tractorino. The Tractorino is a MIDI controller for tractor, but it's for uh, really any, any DAW, anything that accepts MIDI, but any DJ software. And um, it has, to, to, for, it's for like two decks. It's pretty simple, but it's nice that it has LED lights for the view meter. You have the buttons for uh, play, pause, cue, sync, and you have those nice knobs here. And let me see, then I made another acrylic enclosure. I have the, for this one, I actually designed my own printed circuit board. So until this time, I was always using wires. So at a certain point, you get tired of soldering 100 wires. It's a, it's a nightmare. I hate soldering wires, okay? I, I'll be honest with you. So I learned how to do my own PCBs. So that's the Tractorino PCB. So what you do, you get an Arduino Uno, and you snap here, and then you just solder all the components here, as you can see, and then you have a pretty uh, affordable MIDI controller for DJs. This controller here was featured in the Arduino website, was featured uh, in the DJ Tech Tools website. I have a list, it was like kind of crazy. When they posted on the Arduino, on the JTEC Tools, it was like everywhere, it was, it was pretty nice. So I know that a lot of DJs downloaded the, 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 the files and did themselves. And I also was selling kits in my website. Next instrument I made was the XT Synth. So I want to show you the XT Synth here. I think the sound will be really crappy because you'll hear from uh, my speakers. But let me check here, Ableton. I think the sound will be really crappy but, because you'll oh, just let from, me stop uh, my, check here, my speakers. Oh, that's gonna be crazy. But let me Anyways. Anyways, my setup is not optimized for audio, which is ironic, but that's because that's my first live and I'm truly sorry. But anyways, you could see the X to synth, where am I here? The X to synth, so was the instrument that was, um, at, this was also my final project in my master's degree, which I finished last year. And that was a time that was like, okay, I am a guitar player and uh, I, I need an instrument that will allow you, allow me to, um, I'm going to post the site, the, the, the link, so you can take a look. And it's an instrument that will allow me to express myself as a guitar player, but I also play the violin. So the instrument has fretless uh, capabilities, similar to a violin, but it's a MIDI controller because you can also map and it, it's, uh, I, I could like, one day I can make a live about the existence. There's a video there. 
you can see here meet the XT synth I talk um, everything about it so uh, that was pretty crazy doing this instrument and I loved it and I love it and I want to make it a real product but it's still not time I still don't have time for that but one day I'll, I'm going to get there so uh, anyways for us to keep going before this like uh, two hours of video where am I here I started making my own MIDI controllers uh, and I realized that this way I was saving a lot of money. Now I can express myself even more uh, with the XT Synth, uh, a finalist in the Gutmann New Musical Instrument competition, which is the biggest competition for new musical instruments in the world, which was pretty cool. I didn't win, but I went to the finals. I met uh, the CEO of Teenage Engineering. Eng Engineering? Uh, he has a complicated name. His so Teenage Engineering is that company that they do the pocket operators. So I met him, uh, Perry Cook. Uh, so there was like some ma amazing people there. I've been to the biggest maker fairs in the world. I went to the New York, the World Maker Fair. I went to the Bay Area in San Francisco Maker Fair, Miami Maker Fair. So I have been doing that for a while. And, uh, and I have been teaching that for a while with uh, the workshop and the, the, and the complete course. And what I want to start talking now is like how you can start doing that, right? So that's, that's why you're here. Uh, so here we have, just let me see, Aaron is a sound designer for video games. Man, do you know Thiago Adamo? I, uh, he's not watching. I hope he was here. Thiago Adamo is a, a good friend from Brazil. He has a really great uh, school for games. He's a big guy in, in uh, game music. If you want his contact, uh, he has some games for Xbox, so Xbox, Twitch. I, I'm not a gaming person, so I don't know. But he's a big guy, and maybe you are too. And like... Uh, yeah, sound designer, video games, you can make your own MIDI controllers to control your synthesizers, your DAW, perfect. Wits, producer, Luis is a DJ, Chris is audio video producer and educator. Also in education, I have, that's really awesome, I have um, a student, it's Paulo, and he works with uh, kids that are impaired, that has some, some uh, level of impairment, and he started making interfaces for those kids so they could communicate easily and affordably. So there are some interfaces that are like super expensive for kids that have some type of a cerebral paralysis. paralysis. So they just have a, a little bit of movement. So he was his own interfaces for his kids so their parents could make one for like 10 bucks so they could communicate with their kids. You know how powerful is this? You know, you're empowering people that, that's like literally changed people's lives. So he's an amazing guy, Paulo Loureiro. He was in the Red Bull residency last year. And um, he's using this in education. Uh, Campbell, finger drummer, then you, like uh, there's the, the, the MIDI fighter that has the 64 buttons. I haven't done one yet, but you can make then like put the layout you want for as many arcade buttons you want. There's like the more you add, it gets more complicated. You, you need to learn something else. But um, anyways, I'm going to talk about that later. Leonard, a control that looks like a Jupiter 8 would be nice. Might to do that some year. There you go. Uh, Aaron, no, I don't know him. I'll check him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll write his name here. His content is in Portuguese, but I think he's, he speaks English. So, go look for him. Tell him that I sent you. <laughs> so he, oh, you also do controllers, video game, for game for with hand problems. Wow. There you go. That's that's really amazing. You know, I feel kind of like, wow, I don't I don't do anything useful. I just do instruments. I mean, they're useful. But, but anyways, so how you can do that? 
you will need a couple things. You will need first an Arduino, which is this thing here. So um, I showed you that I showed you this Arduino and this Arduino, and there's also this one here, which is the Tinsy 3.2. So uh, what is the difference of, from them? Like, what is the difference? You need, a, you need an Arduino, but which Arduino? One big difference between the Arduinos, obvious, is the size. The smaller the board, the better for your final project. If you're committing to a final project. However, if you want to do a prototype, which is the way you will start, you should start with a board that one, it's easier to handle, so this one is a little bit bigger, but a big difference between them is this one has holes. I already soldered the pins here so you can snap in a in a board. But anyways, you can like solder wires. And in the Arduino Uno, you can't solder wires. What you do is you use jumpers. Let me show you here, I have one ready. You use jumpers, which is those cables, which you can just detach and reattach really easily without committing to soldering. So for you to start, you should start with an Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno. You should start with an Arduino Uno because it's great for prototyping. Can you do a final project with an Arduino Uno? Of course you can. I use an Arduino Uno in my Tractorino, but I use it in a different way. But for a final project, use the Arduino Uno. Uh, next thing you're going to need is a breadboard. And don't worry, I'm going to tell you everything again in details in the workshop. Um, you're going to need this breadboard, which I use to put my components and my wires. Again, I will explain how you can use this. So an Arduino Uno, a breadboard, and buttons. I have those buttons here. So, okay, how can you build this for under 40, 40 bucks? Let's do some math now. Um, Let's say, uh, let's share my screen. So, <clears throat> let's see how much you are going to spend if you build a MIDI controller. Let's, let's think about like a final project. Um, an Arduino Micro, so it's 2.85. An Arduino Micro can... Let me show you a type of MIDI controller I'm talking about. Uh, I should have saved the picture. So this one. So this one I did was, I think was the first beautiful one I did. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's cool. You know, I used like green acrylic here like glow it, it glows in the dark kind of glows it's really nice so to do a midi controller like that 12 arcade buttons six potentiometers 12 because 12 is and six potentiometers because that's the maximum of inputs that you that we have with the arduino pro micro so number of inputs and outputs is also something that changes between arduinos however you can increase the number of inputs and I have a topic just about that in the complete course, the making music with Arduino. But anyways, let's see how much. So 12 arcade buttons. So let's see how much is an arcade button. So arcade button. I like to buy the Sunwa replacement. Sunwa is the type of Japanese arcade button. There's two types. So... Um, Here is 50 for 10 bucks. 
let's think about like Amazon. <laughs> I think you can buy for 50, 50 cents each, maybe. I know that 50 cents is like a conservative number. Um, like this one, let, let's make the count. Let's say the math here, 930, oops. 930 divided by 50. <laughs> 20 cents per button. Well, let's say you're paying more. So um, let's say you're paying 50 cents, 50 cents per button times 12, it's six, plus the Arduino 2.85, $8.85. Let's see how much is a potentiometer. Um, Thirty-seven cents a lot of five pieces. It's so cheap. Let's say you're paying like twenty cents. Uh, so um, six. Let's make it like fifty cents to make the math easier. Because it depends on where. If you're buying on Amazon, like in America, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So plus three dollars. Uh, plus the knobs of the the knobs of the the potentiometers so let's say plus three bucks uh, let's say more what else we need buttons potentiometers we need wires let's say we're going to you're going to spend more two bucks in wires sick people sixteen dollars and eighty five cents in components Sixteen dollars. Let's say you're paying twenty bucks in components. Okay, twenty bucks in components total. You can probably spend way less than that. Um, then you need an enclosure. The most expensive thing is the enclosure. <laughs> That's funny because we think that oh the board and the electronics. No, the electronics is the cheapest thing. The, the what costs more is the enclosure. So for example, I have here a, um, let me grab to my, let me come back to my camera. I have here um, the enclosure of the Tractorino. It's laser cut. This thing, a piece of plywood, is this plywood? I guess it's plywood. A piece of plywood to build the, uh, the enclosure of the Tractorino is like $3. So, and, but acrylic is more, it's more expensive. So if you have access to a fab lab, which is a place that you pay a monthly fee and you, you, you just have access to the laser cutter, 3D printers, you can buy, you can make, make an enclosure made of wood for less than 10 bucks and uh, an acrylic enclosure maybe for 15 bucks and if you then you can ask for someone or a company and you will pay at most like maybe 20 bucks so let's say that okay 15 bucks so there you go you can of course you can spend more than 40 bucks you can go really high but you can build a MIDI controller which is something like this, which like if you're into finger drumming uh, and if you want something simple, that was the thing I used for, for some years. I had two of this in my setup and that was just, was great. And it was less than 40 bucks each, right? And, but the thing is, it doesn't stop there, right? Then you can, once you do your first one, you can uh, you can keep going and uh, do th things like the the Tractorino. Uh, let me come back to the screen. You can do things like the like a Tractorino, like the XT synth that I made, and that's really uh, life changing. That's that was a game changer for me. It definitely changed the path of my career. I was a composer and then I became a maker and that became my thing. I'm doing more music now, but 
then after I graduated, I got a job here at Bow State as the, it, it, it is called Human Computer Interaction Electronics Designer. Human Computer Interaction Electronics Designer, kind of a fancy name. But so I work with multimedia art here. And just let me see. Okay, and for you to uh, make a MIDI controller, of course, there's the programming part. So um, let me show you here how it looks. Let me share my screen. I am sharing my screen. This crazy loop here. So I am opening now the Arduino's IDE, the Arduino Integrated Integrated Development Environment, which is the place that you uh, program your Arduino. So here is the code that I'm going to uh, give you in the workshop. So I have done this through years, right, I have been uh, upgrading and making it better. And the only thing you will have to do is just changing, for example, the number of pins you are using, in which pins you are connecting, the numbers of potentiometers you are using, the pins you are connecting, and that's it. It's, it's going to be really easy for you. So what I took months, maybe a year to learn, it's going to take you a week, a couple of days. And if you actually want to learn how I got into this code, how you can uh, understand, if you want to understand the code, or if you want to uh, add more things, I have the paid course too, the, code, the Making Music with Arduino. So, okay, so you might be wondering, okay, so how I do that? You know that the, you need an Arduino, you know, you know how you need the, the, the Arduino IDE, you need to upload the code in the Arduino. So how you do that? So, um, I prepared the two things. One is the DIY MIDI controller workshop, which I have the link here on YouTube in this video. So you can click there. So if you are not in my list yet, in my email list, just click there. And <clears throat> Click watch now, it's going to ask, uh, ask your email. <clears throat> and then um, on Monday, I'm going to start sending you, the, sending you the videos. Then it's not going to be live. It's all recorded. Um, I redid everything I spent three months doing. Uh, I thought it was time for me, I, I have a better, better camera. Uh, I have like more knowledge. I can teach this better. So I thought I should redo my DIY MIDI controller workshop. And I also added classes to the making music with Arduino, uh, also updated. And so what is the difference here? So once you come here, there's some info about the course. Um, once you put your email there, you're gonna have you're gonna get one class on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. Three classes. First class, you're going to learn why you should be making your own MIDI controllers. Things that we already talked here about MIDI and uh, way more in details about what is an Arduino and what it can do for you. Second class uh, is about how you, how to design a circuit. I'm going to show you a, a software that I use to design my circuit, which is Fritzing how you can use that and how uh, you can actually um, build the circuit, assemble the circuit in order to use it for a MIDI controller. And in the third class, I'm going to show you how you can upload the code in the Arduino, how to adapt the code to your needs, how to map your MIDI controller in any DAW, and uh, how to take this to the next level. So what I mean about take this to the next level. So uh, this course here, the DIY MIDI controller workshop, is for you to build your first MIDI controller really and inexpensively and fast. You can build, I'm going to show you how you can build a prototype in the breadboard like this. But once you know how to do this, it's just 
really easy for you to go to this. The only difference is that this one is using wires and different buttons and different, different potentiometers. And the other one is using a breadboard and uh, jumpers and a different Arduino. The code will be exactly the same. The only thing is that for this, you will have to learn how to solder. So uh, <clears throat> after that, after the, let me find me here. After you uh, watch the classes, I'm going, I'm going to present you with my making music with Arduino. So the making music with Arduino is a course that will teach you how to pro how to code everything about electronics for you to become, let's say, a DIY pro. So one thing about this course is this is that it is a programming course on its own, right? So one and as I said, like in the beginning, once you know programming language, you can pro program whatever you want and learn any other programming language you want. So you can even do uh, computer software, uh, the more fancy things with art installations. But more practical to the MIDI controller uh, thing is that I teach also how to use other types of components. Uh, for example, I have, uh, I'm going to show you here some other types of sensors, but uh, in this course I'll show you how you can use rotary encoders which are the endless encoders of the, uh, that you have in many MIDI controllers, which is uh, more complicated to use. So uh, that's why I have just a module just for that. Uh, I will teach you how you can, uh, let's come back to my camera here. So uh, like for example, once you know how to code and the, the essence, like the, 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 the main thing about electronics, you'll be able to uh, use like sensors, like flex sensors, uh, endless potentiometers, the rotor encoders, or even like using displays, like or like a joystick, um, type of uh, position sensor, which is the one that I use in my uh, XT synth. And I also leave available the code, the code for all my MIDI controllers like the Axis Synth. So it's just there. And you can see that also the Axis Synth has uh, lights. It changes color. It's way nicer in the dark. So I also teach how you can uh, control LED lights. And even, and once you know how to control LED lights, you can even uh, use it to control uh, motors. So you get the idea. So the DIY MIDI controller workshop is for you to get your hands down and uh, do it a MIDI controller fast. It's copy and paste. You don't need to understand what's going on. You know, it's completely free and it's amazing. And you, you might not even ever need anything besides that, right? However, if you like that, if you think that making is something you like, which was something that I learned, I love it you might want to join the, the, the Making Music with Arduino, which is, I think it has about 60 classes, many modules, and um, it, it's, it's really great. And um, once you get the emails, you will learn more about that. And I have videos there explaining everything you need to know. And also it's super affordable. I have, plan, I have different plans. And I think that anybody that wants to learn more can join. And guys, I think that's uh, about that. We oh, it was five eight, and we were like about an hour. That's great. So please let me know in the comments if you have questions, like any type of questions about the workshop, about uh, life. And uh, while we post your questions, I'm going to tell you uh, what what's happening next with me. Um, <clears throat> so I said that this week was my last day in, in, my, in my job at Ball State University. I decided to not continue here for a couple reasons. 
uh, one reason is that would be so for me to stay here I would have to work in my working visa because uh, I am international here would be a big bureaucracy but was possible but I realized that this is the type of thing I really uh, like doing is building stuff is uh, doing tutorials and uh, also traveling I really love traveling and <clears throat> with a nine to five job was not really uh, possible to do in the way I wanted. So I decided to leave the job and try to pursue a full-time uh, nerd musician and other things like that. So uh, I'm really excited. It's uh, as, a, as a musician life, artist life, we never know how it's going to be. It's a big, uh, I'm just, I don't know exactly how it's gonna, if it's gonna work out. But that's also one of the reasons that I redid my courses. Also, uh, I, I'm redoing the marketing, the marketing and everything. So of course I can sell more because one thing uh, feeds the other, right? The workshop, the free workshop, doesn't exist without the paid workshop, right? Money has to come from somewhere. Mostly now that uh, I'll be doing that full time. So that's one of the reasons you should join the making music with Arduino but anyways next month late July I'll be going to California just for a brief period of time I'll, I'll spend there August and maybe I'll, I'll look for giving some workshops in the Bay Area so if you live in the Bay Area if you know nice places to uh, for me to to give a workshop I'll be in Davis near Sacramento, so San Francisco, Sacramento, uh, and any place around that in the, in the month of August. Then beginning of September, I'll, late August, beginning of September, I'll be on Burning Man. If you don't know what Burning Man is, it's a big festival which happens in the desert of Nevada. Uh, 70,000 people doing all sorts of crazy things, lots and lots of art. And I'll be giving a workshop on Burning Man for the first time. It's going to be my fifth time on Burning Man. And I'll be teaching a workshop, which is going to be basically, I think, what I uh, did with you guys today. Like a big intro to how people can build MIDI controllers. So if you are on Burning Man, please come meet me. Send me a message. And let's hang out there. Let's get some dust in our asses. Sorry for that. But yeah, Burning Man is dusty. He's in the middle of the desert, and I love it. Um, <clears throat> so what else? And after Burning Man, I'll be traveling to Southeast Asia. So uh, I don't have any uh, professional, let's say, goals right there. Uh, it's really like a trip that I always wanted to do, but I definitely want to give workshops in Southeast Asia. I'll be going to Thailand probably um, maybe Malaysia, maybe uh, maybe Vietnam, maybe Bia Myanmar, and might go to Bali, I don't know. I'm probably going to spend like two or three months there. And I'll be doing, uh, I'll be creating something that I don't know if it's, I'm going to create another channel or put videos on that. I'll be recording my life during this trip and sharing how this life of this like nerd musician and I'll be sharing more of my musical uh, aspect, my musical life that's not so nerdy in this other channel or in this channel. So, but I will share next month. Okay, so guys, uh, <clears throat> that's about it. Like Ninga asked if I know Adalite protocol. I don't know Adalite protocol. I'm sorry, that's disappointing. I don't know the, uh, the answer, but Usually when I use LED lights, I use the fast LED library for uh, the Arduino. You can use it in Tinsy. Fast LED library, it's really nice. Uh, I used to use the Adafruit library, but um, LED, fast LED is more complicated to use, but it's faster. I uh, have a much faster update uh, time and it's way more powerful. It's what I'm using in the in the Exosynth, I use what I'm using here. I use a, um, a Tinsy board, 
which has more inputs and is uh, a little bit more powerful. Uh, the TNC can be MIDI class compliant. I also teach in the Making Music with Arduino how to make your Arduino's MIDI class compliant or like just plug and play. And I think that's it, guys. So um, go there. What I want you to do now is click in that link below. Um, subscribe, put your email, and I'm going to send the course next week. And also share this uh, video or share this link with your friends. I'm sure you have some uh, friends that could benefit from that. And it was really a pleasure talking to you. That was my first live. I'll be more techy prepared next time, sharing a good sound and things like that. But I think that worked fine. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for coming. It was really nice getting to know you. And if you find me on Facebook, uh, just add me there. And if you have questions, send me. I'm going to write my email here. Make sure I don't misspell. So if you have questions, you can just send me an email. Also, you can add, on, add me on Facebook. Um, and I think that's it, guys. It was, was great. It was really great. I hope you got something from this. And I hope to see you in the, in the workshop and also in the Making Music with Arduino. And go there, make something. I'll leave the list of materials, like link where you can buy things. I sell kits. I don't have many units to sell right now. Because like I am moving, so I'm not keeping uh, stock with me. So a lot of people have been asking me about kits, and I have been selling kits because I'm moving to another country, and I'm going to be traveling, backpacking, <laughs> right? So it's going to be hard to. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do with the kits, but I'm going to figure out something, right? So in the in the course, I'm going to leave the kit, the, the link for the kits, and you can uh, buy from me, or you can buy from. Uh, Aliexpress, Amazon, whatever. It's all there. Okay, so nice to meet you. Was great meeting you. And I hope I do more lives now. Maybe once a month at least. Let's see. Okay, and put in the comments below uh, if you have anything idea of what you want to build. Um, and most like if you are watching this video later, it's going to be available so you can watch whenever you want. Uh, tell me here in the comments. Uh, what do you want to build and uh, what what do you think about this video? Like, or do, do you think that's uh, worth it? The learning the learning process, like spending some time learning something uh, that can make you save money, make MIDI controllers the way you want, make you express yourself more, uh, make can boost your workflow. Put in the comments here. Okay, guys. So have a great day. Here is still like a. Beautiful afternoon. I'm going for a run. And it's hot here because I turned off the AC. So, okay, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.